So PCOD was only a gynecological problem. So uh, once you go to a gynec, they are going to tell that you have this complaint. It was not a common term. But recently, with more and pe more people getting into this complaint, PCOD has become very common. Like anybody you ask, they themselves tell you that I'm having PCOD. People come to you in the uh, hospital. As soon as before we consult, they themselves tell their problem that I have PCOD and I need treatment for that. Okay. So that much it became very prevalent these days. And you can see a lot of young girls, especially uh, between 20 to 35. So this is the age we get lots of PCOD complaint. There are so many reasons there. This is a reproductive age uh, and uh, women go through a lot of stress physically and mentally. So this age is considered very much crucial for PCOD. So let us see, today we are going to see what is PCOD, what is polycystic ovarian disease, how it is causing different problem, how it can be managed through naturopathy and yoga, what exactly is the mechanism. So this is what we are going to see in next one hour, okay? So let me share my screen. Okay, so here we are. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, okay, sure. Thank you. So today, a PCOD, a complete cure through naturopathy and yoga. So what is PCOD? I didn't write anything because I wanted the picture to be self-explanatory. So here... So, a woman having pain during menses, having lots of pimple, acne, thick skin, and a male pattern of hair. So, this is a main complaint we see in patients. Patient comes with a complaint that, doctor, I have face in my hair, beard-like, and the skin becomes very thick, and there is Men's um, pain in, during menses is very severe and irregular menses. Like one month you get in 30 days, next month you get in 40 days, and then 15 days. It just it's just irregular. So all these are symptoms of PCOD. So when uh, when somebody tells all these things, we can suspect that they have complaint of PCOD because. Women, especially in our setup, like a, a society like ours. People won't go to a gynec immediately, right? So when they skip their periods, they're so scared. Like uh, they don't tell anybody. So they don't have anybody to discuss about it. So they keep uh, uh, these problems to themselves. So these problems get bigger and bigger. For example, that could be that many cysts, like small grapes, like structure. So this is how I tell to my patient. So uh, like a grapes, like it becomes small structure around the ovary. So when it happens, the egg will not be released from ovary. So that happens and it causes severe pain. And another important thing is it causes infertility. So in India, PCOD is a very big cause for infertility. So in a culture, uh, as soon as getting married, oh, within one year or two years, they should have a baby. So that is the norm that's been uh, in our culture. So again, that's because of the questioning. They come to a gynec and they come, then only they come to find out that there is a problem called PCOD. Since then, they don't have, they don't have problem with their irregular menses. When it comes to baby, uh, they have all these problems. And so they ask a gynec opinion. So what a gynec says is, unless and un until, the ovary ovulation day is uh, fixed. They fix means uh, they know they can't give any treatment. So to give an injection for ovulation or to uh, for hormonal injection, they should know a correct day. So first thing they are going to correct is polycystic ovary. So what happens is the cyst-like grapes-like structure, like a bunch of grapes, it comes around the ovary, it does not allow the ovary to release the eggs. So no eggs, no menstruation. And if there is no, no ovulation, there is not going to be any baby. 
in india one in four couples if four couples are getting married one of one couple is not going to get baby that is the statistics now there are so many reasons there is uh, there are reasons of male infertility and there are so many other reasons but polycystic is one reason which can be cured there are lots of people who has cured and got baby uh, by following correct lifestyle and food that is the importance of knowing polycystic ovarian disease it's not just about yourself and any women who is going through infertility can maybe because of pcod and correcting this could help them okay so these are the symptoms we see very obviously uh, some women have thick patches in their skin right you would have seen kalithula or black are grow so we may be thinking that they they don't take bath well <laughs> i have seen lot of people who are telling that rub well and take bath no it doesn't go it is because of the hormonal imbalance so there are lots of people who has pain uh, who has dark skin in the neck here armpit so all these place if the skin is getting dark you might conclude that you are having hormonal imbalance okay so all these could be uh, uh, together forms polycystic ovarian disorder everything uh, the skin thickness male hair pain everything and so what is the ratio one in five women it is as common as this we are thinking that it's uh, very uh, once in Uh, we see but it is very common as one in five women if you know five women one of them might be having this words so it is very very important thing to know about this and symptoms can you all mute yourself ik raja thank you okay so we have the symptoms and causes first thing is genetic causes can you believe whenever we ask about uh, pcod first thing we ask them is is your mom or your uh, aunt like amma chitti paati yaar ka the menstrual irregularities irka apdi na first thing we ask because polycystic ovary disease we don't know why but it runs in family if your mom or your aunt or your grandparent grandmother has it there is more chance that you have that symptom okay second thing is there are multiple cysts in the ovaries so this cyst may be because of the high androgen and lack of hormone levels that is again estrogen progesterone and all these things could contribute so it is like a vicious cycle another one important thing is weight gain so there are lots of women who says that whatever we do weight doesn't reduce at all so we tried everything it didn't work so for them if ever you have a complaint of pcod pcod leads to weight gain and weight gain will leads to pcod it's a cycle so one it goes leads to other and another leads to so it's a cycle so if you have to break the cycle even if you are overweight you may have pcod if you are pcod you may be overweight so to break this cycle it's very very important so as soon as we see the symptom we already saw the male pattern hair and all those thing another thing is weight gain women tend to gain weight so much you can see college girls lot of people who comes with pcod are this college girls main thing is they they tell me that they don't eat anything it may be true also they are in hostel they don't eat anything but still they gain so much weight second thing is irregular menses as i said 30 days 40 days third thing is very important they experience anxiety and depression so it looks very um, uh, how uh, uh, physical symptom could uh, cause this right. but the thing is in pcod and hormones or any hormonal imbalance there will be an associated uh, mental health issues like anxiety and depression so pcod we can very clearly see that they will have mood swings especially before the menstruation one week before the menstruation they will have mood swings of um, premenstrual syndrome that we call so that will be there so all these could be the symptoms so how really it happens so as i said there are grapes like structure you can see the picture here 
the first one there are so much uh, like uh, bubbles water bubbles you have this structure right so they are the follicles inside there is egg the okay and this white color structure is cyst it is not healthy so you can see the second picture the normal ovary after the egg is released it becomes corpus luteum just like a scar tissue after it releases the egg the mature follicle becomes like a scar tissue but what happens is in polycystic all are immature follicles this is the main reason for infertility when there is no mature follicles you don't have a healthy egg when there is no healthy egg there is very less chance for getting pregnant so that is a very uh, important reason that polycystic ovary has to be resolved if ever somebody is planning for pregnancy okay so this is very very important second thing what we can see is hormone levels so hormone levels here we have three hormones that we have to think up first is testosterone second thing is estrogen and third is progesterone so we all know that testosterone is a male hormone right so that testosterone gives strength to male uh, broad shoulders arms their vocal cord uh, skin uh, the rough skin they have hair the forearm face everything is because of testosterone but even female have testosterone male have estrogen it's like you know uh, we are not totally male, female <laughs> male are not completely male we have a little part of male in us they have little part of female in us that is how uh, human beings are created so what happens in women is testosterone should be very less if ever it is more it will cause problem in which a woman looks like male like uh, uh, physically rough skin and all so what happens is normal women estrogen is very high testosterone is very less but in some places when there is hormonal imbalance there is testosterone is more estrogen becomes less so in that condition what happens is excess androgen so when there is excess androgen estrogen is going to be very less when estrogen is very less the egg is not going to be formed it will be just uh, empty eggs so we have lot of chickens uh, eggs when we buy there will be some egg which is not matured and it will be we just put it in dustbin like this spoiled one so same like that in human being also some eggs are not matured enough and so uh, they, they they will be uh, not fit for pregnancy okay so these are the reasons why it happens is because of this hormonal imbalance and second thing is insulin resistance so excess insulin this we have spoken in lot of our uh, weight loss uh, webinars we have seen in which there is excess of insulin so insulin as we see we we know only with diabetes right uh, have if ever you have checked any polycystic we have many doctors here so you will be knowing if our polycystic disease if you see a patient first thing the doctors will give you is the same tablet as they give for diabetes patient same metformin so the reason is both have the same mechanism so what is this insulin resistance why it is why diabetes and this are related for example there is a lock and key right for insulin to work this key should be fit into the correct lock so what happens if a lock is rusted thuru pidicha palaya pootna enna agum the key doesn't fit right the same thing happens even if you have the key if ever the lock is bad you can't open it so that is the thing happen your body has so much insulin insulin are keys but for insulin to work you need the key insulin receptor should be proper so when there is insulin resistant you have so much insulin but body doesn't recognize that it is insulin they will ask you who are you man what are you doing so when your body doesn't know what is insulin so what is the point in having insulin so 
when it happens in pancreas it is diabetes when it happens in ovary it is polycystic ovarian disease so that is only important anybody having polycystic ovarian disease always has a chance of becoming diabetic we see lot of young girls becoming diabetic because polycystic and diabetes is so much related that they could cause insulin resistance okay so these are the reasons why it happens so what to do so we know we know uh, all the symptoms all the problems so what to do how to help so uh, there are so many things that we can do first thing i'll tell you what a, a allopathy doctor or modern medicine will be doing first thing they give you insulin sensitive medicines like i said they'll be giving diabetes medicine metformin which will increase the insulin sensitivity they are making the lock proper <laughs> so that the key can fit so that your body assembles insulin and it makes itself to work one thing second thing they help to reduce they give you hormonal tablets to reduce the testosterone and to increase the estrogen this is second thing okay so these are the things they they work on and if ever it's very much they may use laparoscopy also surgical procedure okay so that i'm not profession to tell that or comment about that but we have very good cure in naturopathy and yoga uh, for pc body we have worked on so many people and they have got very beautiful results so that we will see the first thing is diet second stress three lack of physical exercise and four addictions and habits this all working on all four of these factors has really has brought down pc body so we'll see one by one okay so first thing we are going to see is pc os diet first before diet i think there are many people who have attended my weight loss webinar so they will be knowing first thing before any diet is you have to start tracking because as a human being we will think that we are not eating anything right so anybody first as soon as they come for diet they say that doctor i don't eat anything wrong i eat only the home cooked food i don't eat junk but still i'm gaining weight but unfortunately we might not know as we are human we are tend to we tend to forget things so first thing you have to track it so tracking you have to have a small diary and write what all the things we eat from morning it could be anything and A, a biscuit or a chocolate or anything a piece of apple right everything because we know everything um, uh, health magazines or their blogs or their youtuber that as soon as you open they give you lot of things which are good food bad food even this one i'm going to upload in youtube so everything is there already there as so many people have said that. the problem is why we are not able to do that we know that a certain food is bad there is some disturbance over okay so we know that which is good food which is bad food. we know that pizza is bad burger is bad and that fruit is good but why we are not able to eat that we know that uh, eating too much of rice is bad but why do we go for it so to know we know everything so we are trying to track where we lack why we have to eat the first thing tracking is very very important so it has to be truthful <laughs> when you are giving your chart to somebody else you may be like uh, what they may think so you will reduce six idli to four idli so we may write anything <laughs> but you yourself write you yourself check what exactly you eat how much you eat from morning to evening so if you keep track of four days you will come to know where you have to cut out by yourself okay so this is one thing you can categorize it like grains dairy water how much you drink so whenever i ask people they tell me that they drink 2 to 3 liters so you have to check 
you have to measure in a bottle and keep the bottle uh, uh, every day morning ready and you should check whether you are really drinking it because we tend to forget it unless and until we are we are thirsty we don't drink so in this you have to make sure that you drink so what to eat and what not to eat so first thing is low gi food this is this diet is both for uh, uh, weight loss diet is and policy stick because all three are related you can't just take one and leave the other. So first thing is, here the, the, the thing is, there is no diary, but you can take diary, okay? And no gluten. So all these are, uh, first you can skip no diary, no gluten part because many people in, in our place, we can't go for them. Focus on low GI food. So what is a GI, glycemic index? We discussed about in diabetes webinar. In detail. So if you take a juice, orange juice and an orange, orange juice takes half an hour to give you its energy. But an orange, as such you eat it, it takes two hours to give you the energy. So for anybody who is going for weight loss or uh, diabetes or PCOD, you have to go for high GI food. That is a fruit instead of a juice which takes so much time to get into blood. Okay, so this is a very simple rule. For example, basmati rice, white rice, takes half an hour to spike the blood glucose. Same thing, millets uh, like uh, tinayarisi, baragarisi, foxtail millet, uh, ragi, all this takes around two hours to release the energy. It slowly, slowly, slowly gives the energy. So that is very good. So always, focus on food which i'm sorry this uh, this chart is not uh, so correct okay so always you have to focus on uh, foods that takes time it takes so much time to uh, uh, get into the blood okay so so such foods are called low gi food it takes more time and low glycemic index it takes very short time it is high glycemic index okay i mixed it so you always has to focus on food that takes so much time to release the glucose into your blood so that is low gi food and again maida junk food trans fat everything increases the inflammation increase the inflammation in the sense it is making the lock that i said insulin resistant is making the lock very, very bad, very, very, it is making it, you can just think it is becoming more rusted, more iron is getting locked on it. So all the trans fat, um, uh, highly processed food, preservatives like caned food, tinned food, uh, uh, stored food, packed food, all these things are very bad. And you have to take proteins and healthy fats with every meal. Because in India, our protein intake is very, very less. For each uh, uh, one kg of your body weight, you have to take at least 0.5 gram. For example, if you are 60 kg, your intake should be at least 30 gram of protein. We don't take that much of protein because two egg has 15 gram of protein only. So, in, and the beans, everything have eight gram. So if you have to have all these things, paneer, so you only if you have all these things uh, uh, regularly, your protein intake will be there. So all these things you have to consider and fat, good fat should be taken. Good fat in the sense it is in nuts, almonds, walnuts, ground nuts. All the nuts are very, very important. Nuts, healthy fat and protein. Protein you can take from animal protein, plant protein. If you are a vegetarian, you have to be more careful and if you are a non-vegetarian, it, it's easy to get protein from non-vegetarian. Vegetarian sources are very less and you have to take more. So foods that can be taken in any amount, like how much ever you want, just you can take for weight loss also. Any fruits, berries and citrus fruits. Berries in the sense, um, even tomato is a berry. So uh, fruits, uh, berries, strawberry, raspberry, we don't get that berries here. But uh, uh, citrus fruits we get here. Citrus fruits of all variety. Mm, you can take orange, amla, 
and guava is very very good koya palam vandu romba romba nallathu papaya is very very good so all these things you can take vegetables all god uh, bottle god rich god udalangai poosinikai peerkangai all this thanni uh, kaigirigal solluvanga le so all those things you have to take squashes pumpkin family uh, in the manjal color la it's always that yellow fruits yellow uh, vegetables are very very good so all the pumpkin um, what is that thing daddy and guy inge the problem is ipo inge kerala la rend i'm getting all the names in malayalam so all these things are good like god god variety squashes pumpkin family leafy vegetables broccoli cauliflower cabbage and sea fishes sea fishes are very very important because they have rich omega 3 fatty acid so that is i think there is disturbance somewhere okay thank you okay sea fishes are very good and next thing is what foods we can take in moderation not high not low you have to take nuts and pulses like for almonds walnuts hazelnuts peanuts all these things you can take in moderation second thing milk products butter cheese ghee these things you can take in moderation whole grain products whole grain products and polished rice brown rice so that is very very efficient than a polished rice white rice meat chicken can be taken in moderation and eggs tubers tubers the sense potato yam tapioca in kerala they have, we have kappa and uh, other in our place tamil nadu i don't think we'll have kappa but uh, in kerala it's thing that you can take in moderation foods that has to be avoided completely processed food refined sugar and grains sweeteners sweeteners that includes natural sweeteners also so in the group we have been discussing on complete sugar detox so anybody having pcod one month if they can strictly follow a diet immediately we are seeing the obvious result in their hormone levels and it is very very good so you can avoid all the sweeteners honey sugar jaggery and frozen food frozen foods have lots of problem because uh, uh, frozen foods more than the preserved foods have lots of uh, additives in it so that can be avoided if possible and calorie tracker so this is very very important in pcod apart from the diet that we take exercise is very very important so uh, we have seen that insulin resistance and all those things right in insulin resistant mainly it is not only food exercise is very very important when we do exercise body produces lot of good hormones that will help in fight with the uh, hormonal imbalance so this good hormone will reduce our stress level increase the insulin sensitivity improves the mental health so exercise is a very important part it's not just exercise uh, this diet Uh, in at least even in weight loss even some people do without uh, exercise but in in pcod you need to do exercise so exercise in the sense we think that some so many women used to say so every day i do some kind of workout i do lot of work in my home i have to keep walking in the home all these things they tell no that is not exercise because our calorie intake is so much more than that for example if you have 500 ml cola which is 200 calories you have to do one hour back room cleaning the room and fish and chips if it is junk food of 1000 calories you have to walk 40 mile <laughs> so you have burger at somewhere and you have to walk back to home only then this calories will be burned so much and for just four chocolate square you have to swim for 15 minutes and a chocolate croissant you have to climb stairs up and down for 30 minutes so this is a, a, a calorie requirement we need we think that we are doing so much work but no that work is not enough to the food that we eat we may have to work so much to burn only then body's calorie will be balanced and next thing is read labels uh, there are lots of things written on behind this right 
So each thing you have to know because we have a Google now, we can check the calories of everything. Any food, you can just see it. Even if it is not in the label, day to day, the food that we eat, you can just check it. And, and you just check what work you're doing, sedentary or moderate or severe work. Based on that, you can adjust your calories and stress. This is very important because stress disturbs the high adrenal function. Our brain have adrenal function. There is a pituitary gland. So both of these things are disturbed when you are in stress. So it increases the male hormone. Can you believe it? Stress can increase the male hormone. So when that happens, female hormones are reduced. So in many PCOD complaints, I see girls a stress does not need a very big cause. Some people think that if you need stress, you have to be having a very severe problem. No, day-to-day -day stresses, the morning to evening, even a little uh, problem, somebody may get so stressed. Some people, if there is a big problem also, they don't get stressed. So it's, it's just subjective. You can't think like somebody doesn't have any problem. Why should they have stress? No, people can have stress in spite of having everything. They may be rich. We may be thinking they don't have problem, but uh, they may be having some other problems. So stress works like that. Even uh, without any problem, we can have stress. So when there is stress, the pituitary function is disturbed. When the pituitary function is disturbed, all the hormones, thyroid is disturbed, insulin is disturbed, because everything comes from a same signal, one point in the brain. So when that is affected, we are going to have full chaos, confusion, all the hormones running here and there, here, uh, increasing level, decreasing level. So that is very, very bad. So in naturopathy, we have some treatments. So this is not a substitute for diet or exercise, but along with this, it helps. So first thing is hip bath that we do in our hospital. So we make the patient to sit in a tub where their abdomen is completely immersed in the water. So uh, earlier days, people used to take bath in the river, right? So they that was considered as a norm. People take bath in river, they sit in the river, pond, uh, natural water resources were there. So people were using that. So that was very good for improving the circulation to the uterus. But unfortunately, now we take bath in bathroom. So we don't have access to river every way. So this hip bath is very, very good. It mimics like taking bath in river. And uh, this can be taken if you have facility of a tub. If not, the same effect can be produced. Like in the next picture, we have abdomen pack. Like in your abdomen, here it is mud. Instead of mud, what you can do is you can dip a towel, what just a simple towel that we use in our home, dip in water, normal tap water, squeeze it, hold it, put it on your abdomen from your navel, covering your entire abdomen. Put it for 20 minutes. Every day morning, as soon as you get up, after you finish your bubble movement, everything, brushing. Put it and lie down again for 20 minutes. This is very, very good for irregular menses, for pain during menstruation and menopause also. So this can be used other than the period state, five days of periods, anytime you can use this for diabetes also. This is very, very good. And next thing is there are some home remedies. These are home remedies which can reduce the pain during menstruation and polycystic. So all these are cinnamon, flaxseed, you can use in uh, herbal tea or fenugreek, fenugreek vendayam. You just can put in buttermilk and you can drink it. And uh, licorice, adi maduram, they say, this is very good. And fish oil, omega, again, it's omega-3 fatty acid. And tulasi is very, very good. Apple cider vinegar. So all these things you can use and it can reduce the pain, but this is not substitute. Other than you work on your weight and uh, diet and uh, exercise, this doesn't work too. So this is one simple asana that can 
reverse polycystic. We have seen a lot of people uh, doing this and got benefited. So what you can do is this is a very simplest asana, butterfly pose. Even if you don't have time at all, just doing this one pose, daily butterfly flaps, just moving the thighs, uh, daily some five minutes morning and if possible five minutes evening. Almost 80% of polycystic can be cured only with this and diet. So it has worked. What it does is when there is a hip movement, the circulation of blood is improved. The ligaments are stretched. So when the ligaments are stretched, the circulation is improved, the function is improved. So the ovary gets more blood circulation. And this is very, very good. You can try this. So thank you. Here the picture that I have is the way out is in. So this I wanted to tell because to get out of something, you have to go through it. Many people uh, taking medication is easy. Taking hormonal tablets is easy. But the thing is, when you work through it, there are a lot of people who work through PCOS. You just can go through Insta pages, Facebook. There are PCOS support groups. They tell their success journey of how they have beat, uh, the have struggled and successfully has come out of PCOS and how they have got pregnant. There are a lot of papers. So you just can go through it because it is a journey. Knowing yourself, healing yourself and getting into a space, comfortable space is a very nice feeling. So when you get an opportunity, it's nice to work on. It. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you. So this is a very short one because we have so many other things to discuss and it differs from patient to patient in each piece of OS. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Even we can have personal consultation later, you can pick me. So you can just unmute yourself. It's a very small group. So we can have a uh, question session in the voice itself. You can unmute yourself and ask. No need to go for chat box. So you can ask me. No, auntie, polycystic you will not cause, but hormonal imbalance, there is a chance for getting endometrial cancer. So there is a probability because whenever there is hormonal imbalance, there is a chance. After menopause, also there is a chance. So it always has to be checked. 40 years, we have to go and check. But hormonal imbalance in the uh, cyst will not become cancer. But hormonal imbalance may rise, give rise to cancer. We have to keep in check. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Good. <laughs> if nobody have any questions, then we will wind up. So thank you so much for patient listening. We have the repeated audience, many people. Thank you for joining. So this uh, session is recorded and will be in my YouTube page. You can go to it and you can forward it also because a lot of people have been asking. They couldn't attend a live session. So that can be recorded and can be sent to people. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Auntie.